Kano is an, a bit of an obscure figure, shrouded in a lot of uncertainty. We know he was somewhere in the 5th or 6th century, so firmly in the Archaic period of the Mediterranean. He was one of these great colonizers. He went out, he established cities, he explored, he basically helped grow the Carthaginian Empire. But seeing, as with problems with all Carthage, all the texts were destroyed and most of the history and culture is gone, we don't have many sources for him. We really only have one source, and that's his Periplus. And we only have it because a Greek traveler wrote it down. And Greek, having translated the, the, the original Punic that it was written in. For those who don't know what a Periplus is, and it's an obscure term, so I doubt many people would, it's a basically a, a ship log. Um, that's the best way of putting it. And this thing was inscribed in stone in a public place as kind of an imperial triumph symbol, like the account of how we built the empire sort of thing. And the particular Periplus that we have from Hanno is of his most famous voyage, which is this voyage he took beyond the Straits of Heracles, beyond what basically was modern-day Gibraltar, and down into Africa. And it's unfortunately a very kind of unknown document. Um, the Greek text isn't really online, it's kind of hard to find. The translation that is out there is kind of weak and kind of archaic, as a lot of our Greek translations unfortunately are. So with this video, I hope to provide my own translation, which is a bit more modern. Of course, it could have flaws, and people are welcome to make criticisms of the comment, especially from other Greek scholars. But I think this captures the spirit and strikes a nice balance between literalism and uh, poetic translation. So without further ado, uh, here is the Periplus of Hanno. Hanonos Chalcedonion Basileos Per Eplus Ton Huper Tas Haracleus Stelas de Bucon Tes Ges Veron Hon Kai Ane Teken En To Tu Cronu Temene Delunta Tade. The Periplus of Hanno of the Carthaginians of Lord Baal across the pillars of Heracles to the land of the Libyan shares, this having been revealed, which he erected as a votive in the precinct of Kronos. This is, serves as the beginning of the narrative as a whole, being what would have been the title inscription. One textual note here that's kind of interesting, Basileos, the Greek word for king or lord, though that doesn't really get the total meaning of it, uh, is often admitted here because it's not clear what it's referring to. I think in the context, and given the uh, strength of the cult of Baal, in Carthage, it can be pretty safely assumed to be um, a epithet of Baal, uh, going especially going right after Carthaginian. Edoxin kakedoinois anona plein exo stelon harakleion kai poles kitzin lebu phoenikion kai ep lucen pente contoros hex e conta. Agon, kai plethos, andron, kai gunaikon, es arithmon, muraadon, trion, kai sita, kai ten, alen, parasku ein. It was thought best by the Carthaginians for Hanno to sail outside the Straits of Heracles and to, fa and to found cities for the Libyan Phoenicians. He sailed to Pentacon Toroi carrying a great multitude of men and women, numbering 30,000, and both food and other provisions. Pentacon Toroi means something like um, ship with 50 oars, so you can kind of get an idea from this of the scale of these things. They would have been these massive, sort of archaic, uh, Hellenistic seafaring ships for war and trade and commerce, which, you know, this voyage was probably trying to do all three of. Hos de Anax Tentes tastelos par e meps amen kai exo plun du oin e meron ep lu samen ek ti samen protein polin hentina o no sasmen du du mia aterion. Having set out on the sea, we left the pillars of Heracles to our homeward side and then sailed out for two days, 
stopping where we built the first city, which we called Taimeterios. Pedion de Aute, Mega, Hupain, Kaipeta, Cros Hesperon, Anoxentes, Episolon Enta, Libucon, Acroterion, Lacion, Den Dressi, Soon El Domen. A great plain was below the city. Then, having set out west, we came to Soliois, a richly forested extension of Libya. Entha Poseidonos, Hiron, Hidrusamenoi, Palin, Epebemen, Thros Helion, An Iskonta, Hemeras, Kimisu, Akri, Ekomis Themen, Es Limen, Uporo, Tesalitas, Kemenen, Kalamu, Mestain, Palu, Kaimegalu. Having founded there a temple of Poseidon, embarking again, we journeyed for half a day into the utmost marsh, which extended not far off from the sea, full of many and great reeds. Enesin de Kai Elephantes, Kaitala, Servia, Menomena, Pampola, Ten Telimnen, Paralaxantes, Poson, Emeras, Luon, Katukesamen, Poles, Proste, Salaten, Rathalate, Kalumenas, Caricon, De Texos, Kai Guten, Kai Akron, Kai Meliton, Kai Arambun. Both numerous elephants and other beasts were grazing within. And having passed through the marshes a great voyage for a day, we established cities by the sea, calling them Karakos, which was walled, Gaita, Arca, Melita, and Arambe. I want to note there's a little bit of awkwardness in the text with uh, Karikon te Texos. Um, basically, it just means Kar uh, Karikon and a wall. Some uh, prior text versions have just left this little bit out. I think what it's implying, though, is that uh, Karakon was the fortified uh, citadel town. And it had the wall, so it's where basically every, all the other towns that they're mentioning would have gone in case of invaders or attack. So that's how I've included it. Kakethen, the Anax Thentes, Elothomen, Epi Megon, Potomon, Dixon Apo Tes Libues, Reonta, Para Deauton, Nomades, Anthropoi, Lix Etai, Boskemat Enomon, Parois, Emenamen, Acri Tinos, Philoi Genomenoi. Then, having sailed onward, we came upon the great river Lixos, which flowed from Libya. The nomadic Lixitai men were grazing cattle within, with whom, having become friends, we stayed with for some time. It's interesting to consider here that our Greek translator of this tablet uses the term Philoi instead of Xenoi. Generally, in the Greek context, we would expect it to be the word Xenoi, we'd think of this Homeric guest friend system. This is what you do when you go to a foreign land. You become guest friends with someone and there's a mutual understanding of respect and reciprocated hospitality. That they didn't use it either could mean a couple things. One, our author is trying to be respectful of the concept not really existing in Phoenician culture. Um, I mean, I'm sure they had a hospitality system, but this very Greek idea is trying to be kept separate. Alternatively, it could perhaps imply less formal relations, or maybe even a genuine kind of alliance or friendship, or covering for some other term. It's very difficult to say, but it's an interesting little um, philologic point. Tuton de Catuperthen, Ethiopes, Okun, Aksemenoi, Gen, Genomenoi, Theriode, De Elmenen, Oresi, Megalois, Exhon, Fren, Fasi, Ton Lixon, Heridata, Ore, 
katoikein anthropos al oeomorphos troglodutas pus taxuterus hippon ex romois ephrazon oe lixitae. And above the Lixitae, the hostile Ethiopians live, grazing the beast-ridden lands, unfurling into the great mountains. It is said from there the Lixen flows, and through the mountains dwell strangely formed cavemen, whom the Lixitae claimed were faster than horses in race. Labontes de Parauton Hermenias par epleomen ten hermenen tros Mesprian duo hemeras ek ethen de palin pros heleon an is exonta hemeras dromon. And tha you am huromen and muxo tinos kolpu nesos micran. Kuklon, Exusan, Stadion, Pente, Hain, Katokesamen, Kernen, Onomasantes, Et Tecmairometha, De Autain, Ectu, Hereplu, Kat Euthu, Kesthai, Karkedonos, E oke gar hoplus ek te kakedonos epe stelas kak ethen epe kermnen. And taking interpreters from the Lixitae, we sailed toward the south along a desert for two days. And there we sailed a course for a day toward the rising sun, meaning the east. There we found in the innermost part of the bay a small island with a diameter of five stadia, which we settled and called Kerna. From our paraplus, we concluded that it had to be situated directly from Carthage, for the voyage had seemed the same from Carthage to the Pillars of Heracles, and thence from the Pillars to Cerna. Tun teuthen es limnen aficometha dia tinos potamu megalu dia pleusantes cretes e exen de nesus he limne tres. Mesus, tes kernes, af hon, he me e sion, plun, kat nusantes, es ton mukon, tes limnes, el thomen, huper, hen, o re, magista, huper etten en, mesta, anthropon, Agrion deramata theria en e menon hoi petrois balontes ap e raxon hemas kuluontes ek benai. Having sailed from there, we arrived into a lake through some great river, and the lake contained three islands, larger than Serna. A day's voyage from these islands having come to an end, we entered the innermost place of the lake, which lay below the highest mountains. It was full of men wearing the skins of wild beasts, who pelted us with stones and stopped our landing. Ekathen pleontas es heteron, elthomen potomon megan kai platun, gemonta krok elon kai hippeon potomion, Othen de Palin, Aposterpsantes, Es Kernen, Epane Lothmen. Then we came to another river, great, broad, and filled with crocodiles and hippopotamuses. Then, having turned back, we returned to the Kerna River. Ekathen de Epimesembrias, Eplusamen, Dodeca, Hemeras, Tengen, Paralegomenoi, Hain Pasan, Katokun, Ethiopes, Fugenontes, Hemas, Kaiuk, Upomenontes, Asuneta, De 
Ephengonto kai tois meth hemon lixitais. Then we sailed along the south coast for twelve days, which was inhabited by Ethiopians, who fled us and did not wait. Though our Lixitai translators heard them speaking clearly, they did not understand. Te de un telethetaia emera pros olmithemen oresi megalois das isen. On the last day, we made anchor by a thicket near large mountains. Ein de taton dendron zula u o de te kai pokile peri plusontes de tauta hemeras duo gigometha en thaletes. Cosmeti ametrito heis epi patera pros te ge pedion in hothen nuctos af uoro omen pur anepheromenon pontax othen catapostases tomen pleon tode eliton and the timber of the trees was both dappled and fragrant having sailed through this place for two days we came upon an ocean expansive beyond measure from which upon either side there were plains from which at night we beheld fires rising up on all sides some larger some smaller this is a bit of a weird passage to consider at first but it makes sense when we think that rather than the land actually being on fire what they're seeing here are the lights of local villages and tribes hudra uso menoi de ekathen Eples epleomen es tumo posthen hemeras pente pargen arche elthomen es megan kolpon hon ephasen hoi ermenu neis kalestai hespuo keras ende tuto nesus Ein megale kai en te ne so limne dale so des en de taute nosos hetera es hein apobantes emeras men uden af eu re omen hoti me hulen nuctos de para pura te pola Kai omena, kai fuon en, aluon, ek umon eku omen, kumbalon tekai, tumpanon patagon, kai krau gen, murian, phobus un elaben, hemas, kai hoi, montes, Ek eluon, ek el elepen te noson. The ships having taken in water, we sailed along the coast for five days until we came to a large bay, which the Lixitai said is called the Horn of the West. And in the bay was a great island, and in the island a sea like lake, and in the lake another island. During the day we disembarked upon it and saw nothing but trees, but during the night we saw many fires burning and we heard the sound of flutes and cymbals and the crashing of drums that their word was taken seriously. And the seers demanded to leave the island. Sometimes you can figure out really big things from really small mentions in a text, and I think the mentioning of the diviners being the reason that Hanno and his men retreat is an interesting one here, because it tells us that among these Carthaginian voyages, at least in the Archaic period, they did have some kind of official priest on board. Even more so than the Romans, which just had certain auspices you had to take, they actually had a designated diviner. Taxu de eplusontes par e me pumetha kauron di apuron thu mi amaton mestein megistoi de apoautes purodes ru u aces en e balon es ten thalaton. He 
gain de hupo, ter mes abatos en. Then sailing away, we came upon a red hot land full of incense, from which massive fiery streams of lava were emptying themselves into the sea, and the earth was impassable because of heat. Taku on kakethen bobethentes apep le usamen. Tetras de hemeras peromenoi nuktos tein gain afeu ro omen flogos mestain. En meso de en elibonton ti pur ton alon mezon. Haptu omen hos edoke ton asturon tuton de hemeras holros efaineto megisto theon okema kalu omenon. Then, obviously afraid, we sailed away, carrying on for four days and nights until we held in view a land full of fire. A certain fire in the middle was steep, greater than the rest. On this day, the greatest mountain was revealed. We called it the Chariot of the Gods. The rhetoric being used here is interesting. Well, you would expect them to talk about a mountain, perhaps as like a great mountain or a huge mountain or something. They're actually using um, megistos, which is the superlative meaning the largest or the greatest. So basically what he's saying is then they came upon the greatest mountain. And given this and the name they give it, the Chariot of the Gods, I chose to translate this section a bit more literally because I think what they're trying to claim is, again, this is kind of, it, it ends... This is the mountain that they have found after trailing this volcano. The source of this eruption, this cataclysmic event which must have impressed upon them. I think they really are making the claim that this is the, if not the greatest, it is one of the greatest mountains on Earth. And even the language uh, ha having been revealed on this day, it's, it's all very, it's a bit over the top. And I think it's best left in the original meaning. Tritai oi de ek ethen pu odes per uakas para pleusantes hafik ometha es ko peopon noto keras legomenon. Then on the third day, sailing away from the rivers of lava, we arrived at the bay called the Horn of the South. Ende to muko nesos en e oiku ia te. Prote, limne, ekusa, kai en tauta, nesos, en hetera, meste, anthropon, agrion, polu de pleus, esan gunaikes. Dasies, tois, somasin. Pas hoi, hermenis, ekluon, Gorilias. Di ocuntes de andras men sulaben uc edune themen. Alla pantes men ex effugon cra e mono batai ontes cae amunomenoi gunaicas de tres. Hai Dak nusai, tekai, spar at uso sai, tus agontas, uk elethon, hep estai, apok tenantes, mentoi autas, ex ederamen kaitas doras, ek misamen es kardekona. Ugar eti epleus semen pros otero ton siton homas ep e lip on ton. And in the innermost part of the bay there was an island, like the first one, which had a lake. And in this one there was another island, full of wild men, and most of the crowd were women with shaggy bodies, which the interpreters were calling gorillas. 
Having chased them, we were not able to seize the men, as all were escaping, being skillful climbers and defensive. But three of the women we took, they biting and slashing, were not willing to follow the hunters. Thus, they were killed and flayed, and their skins we took as prizes to Carthage. For having f been failed by our provisions, we did not sail onwards. And that's the epic conclusion. Though, we should probably discuss a few things, because you probably have a few questions. It's a weird conclusion. Um, first off, the gorillas they're discussing are actually, well, gorillas. And it's interesting, too, because it... We can only imagine coming across these in the ancient world where we've had no experience with this kind of thing. They really do think that these were wild men, just like uh, the ones the Likitai described to them, these Ethiopians that wear the skins of beasts, that the gorillas are really to them, at least how they're, they're describing this, no different. I mean, of course, the fact that they were willing just to skin <laughs> the, the gorillas having killed them probably indicates, I, I'd imagine, the crew had an idea of what was going on, that they were some kind of animal. But still, it's this really kind of almost semi-mythical encounter for them. And I think there very well may be something to the idea that, that this is kind of a hyping up of rhetoric, because this whole idea, the, 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 the island within the lake, within the island, within the bay, we've seen this before, and it was used in the, you know, in the same um, sense when, before they met the the tribe that that they were briefly describing that was bashing the cymbals and playing this music and screaming and the seers that they had to leave it's again this 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 encounter with the savage it's 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 being used to prelude both so there is there is kind of a symmetry here and and it's something you should it's worth considering this entire piece is how much of this is really just being hyped up to better sell the voyage back home and that's something that you just kind of have to consider because, you know, as with all ancient sources, it's difficult to tell. And of course, the other thing that's quite obvious is that this is the end of the narrative, and that's interesting because, again, we would be nice to know what happened on the way home. You know, it's possible it was just uneventful or also possible, and I might throw my weight behind this theory, that it doesn't tell as good of a story. When you're going back home, things are getting more normal, even if you do run into something like, hey, maybe the volcanic eruption happened on the way home. It doesn't, it's not as interesting to put it that way. If you have this building up to this final encounter with the savage men, the land getting more cataclysmic and terrifying, playing into these ancient theories that perhaps the world just ended or that you were going into the, these, like, these unknown seas of monsters, like the places where Odysseus travels and his misadventures... On that note, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of the Parables of Hanno, and I hope you've gotten something out of it, and uh, at the very least, a greater perspective on these ancient worlds that are lost to us. And thank you for, for visiting my channel, thank you for watching the video, and thank you for bearing with my classical Greek reading.